Welcome back to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this video, we will kick off section two of the series, which is all about tensors. We'll talk tensors, terminology, and look at tensor indices. This will give us the knowledge we need to look at some fundamental tensor attributes that are used in deep learning. Without further ado, let's get started. Tensors are the primary data structures used by neural networks. The inputs, outputs, and transformations within neural networks are all represented using tensors. As a result, neural network programming utilizes them heavily. The concept of a tensor is a mathematical generalization of other more specific concepts. Each of these examples are specific instances of the more general concept of a tensor. Let's organize this list of example tensors into two groups. The first group of three terms, number array and 2D array, are all terms that are typically used in computer science, while the second group, scalar, vector, and matrix, are terms that are typically used in mathematics. We often see this kind of thing where different areas of study use different words for the same concept. The terms in each group correspond to one another as we move from left to right. To show this correspondence, we can reshape our list of terms to get three groups of two terms. The relationship within each of these pairs has to do with the number of indices required to access a specific element. There are zero indices required for a number and a scalar because you just refer to the actual number or scalar value. You don't need an index. When we move to an array or a vector, we need one index to refer to a specific element. And then when we move to a 2D array or a matrix, we need two indices to refer to a specific element. Let's suppose we have an array called A with four elements. Now suppose we want to access the number three in this data structure. We can do it using a single index like so. As another example, let's suppose we have this 2D array called DD. Notice that we need two indices to refer to the number three in this 2D array. When more than two indices are required to access a specific element, we stop giving specific names to the data structures and begin using more general language. In mathematics, we stop using words like scalar, vector, and matrix, and we start using the word tensor or ND tensor. The N tells us the number of indices required to access a specific element within the structure. In computer science, we stop using words like number, array, and 2D array and we start using the word multidimensional array or the word ND array. I very rarely use words like vector and matrix because like they're kind of meaningless specific examples of something more general which is they're all n-dimensional tensors. So let's make this clear. For practical purposes in deep learning and neural network programming, tensors are multidimensional arrays. Physicists get crazy when you say that, because to a physicist, a tensor has quite a specific meaning. But in machine learning, we generally use it in the same way. So tensors are multi-dimensional arrays, or ND arrays for short. The reason we say a tensor is a generalization is because we use the word tensor for all values of N. For example, a scalar is a zero-dimensional tensor, a vector is a one-dimensional tensor, a matrix is a two-dimensional tensor, and an ND array is an n-dimensional tensor. Tensors allow us to drop these specific terms and just use an n to identify the number of dimensions we are working with. One thing to note about the dimension of a tensor is that it differs from what we mean when we refer to the dimension of, say, a vector in a vector space. The dimension of a tensor does not tell us how many components exist within the tensor. If we have a three-dimensional vector from three-dimensional Euclidean space, we have an ordered triple with three components. However, a three-dimensional tensor can have many more than three components. Our two-dimensional tensor DD, for example, had nine components. In the next post, we will cover the concepts of rank, axes, and shape. These are the fundamental attributes of tensors that we use in deep learning. If reading's your thing, I highly recommend you check out the blog post for this video on deeplizzard.com. Also, check out the Deep Lizard Hive Mind for exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks again for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you in the next one.
Well, it used to be that if you wanted to get a computer to do something new, you would have to program it. Now, programming, for those of you who haven't done it yourself, requires laying out in excruciating detail every single step that you want the computer to achieve, to do in order to achieve your goal. Now, if you want to do something that you don't know how to do yourself, then this is going to be a great challenge. So this was the challenge faced by this man, Arthur Samuel. In 1956, he wanted to get this computer to be able to beat him at checkers. How can you write a program, lay out in excruciating detail how to be better than you at checkers? So he came up with an idea. He had the computer play against itself thousands of times and learn how to play checkers. And indeed it worked. <laughs>